Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank the Most High of Yahuwah for uh, allowing us to come out today and just bestowing us with his favor, with his goodness, kindness, and his mercy. We thank him for all things. And um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and get ready to start our service. And we're going to ask um, Aki... We'll ask our visitor Moray, Moray uh, Sadak Bakaya, to lead us in prayer, okay. opening prayer. We're going to ask everyone to turn and face towards the east as he brings us in with prayer. Baruch Atah, Yahuwah Avahim, Malak Olam, bless to you, Yahuwah our Father, King of the Universe. Abba, as we come before you, this is the yom that you have made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it. We say hallelujah to the Most High Yah, the creator of the heaven and the earth. Abba, we're asking for you to have your way in our service, for you to use More Aliyahu, for you to anoint him, for you to have your way in his life, for you to have your way in this service, for you to touch your people, minister to our heart, strengthen, and have your way. Total Rabbi Abba, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, at this time we're going to have some testimonies. Uh, anyone like to share with the Mishpachah the goodness of Yahuwah Elohim and what he has done in their life and what he has done for them throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year? Hallelujah, you can do so at this time. Why y'all all got to look at me? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have uh, Aki uh, Shalak Yahoo to stand and give his uh, testimony. Hallelujah. I just want to um, thank Abi Hua because um, you know we had our we had our daughter Shalom. Uh, her name is Shalom Ariel Williams, and it means the peace, uh, the peace of the line of God, or the peace from the line of God. Um, it's it's great that she's here and she's healthy. Hallelujah. Because prior to her being born, the doctors had all this stuff to say about how. They felt she might be, or, uh, be have autism, or they felt that she would have these type of complications. The placenta wasn't this way, and all this, that, and the other. But uh, you know, Yahuwah reminded me to to remember the dreams that He gave me of my children, and how I saw them in those dreams. And I saw them healthy. I saw them vibrant. They were able to talk. I saw their hair, the color of their skin, all of that. And He reminded me to remember those dreams because that's His word to me. That's His promise to me. And I, I kept those things at, at the forefront, and I reminded my wife of those things during her pregnancy so she won't become depressed with the news that we was getting from the doctors. And I, I lied to you guys not. When my, when my baby girl came out, she, she's strong. She's in the higher percentiles of, peop of people that was born in, with her weight, with her height. Um, and it's the, the stuff that she's doing, even that her just coming out, is it, amazing to doctors because they thought she was going to be a certain way. So I just want to give Abby Hua all praise for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody in the room said the same thing about her. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to praise the Most High. Being here, we got here, and we got there last night, got here safely. Uh, came down to see my son and his family, uh, my granddaughter. I just praise the Most High for being here. It's been a while oh, yeah. since we've been here to fellowship, so definitely uh, happy to be here and yeah. just ready to hear the word. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. This time we're going to get in the word. Come on, let's give you a little love and to the book of uh, Hebrews. We're going to start at the uh, seventh chapter beginning at the first verse. Setting the captives free. Hebrews 7 and 1. Okay. Hebrews 7 and 1. We're going to ask um, Maury Yemi Yahoo, if you would, um, just begin at the first verse. For this, Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High, who met Abram, Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings and broke him and blessed him. Oh, said, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, or king of peace, or shalom, priest of the Most High, Yahuwah Elohim, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and broke him. Go ahead. To whom, Abram, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, First being by interpretation, king of righteousness, mm -hmm. and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. King of Salem, king of peace. Go ahead. Without father, without mother, nor descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the son of Yahuwah, abideth a priest continually. So, one thing that should be paramount one thing that's imperative to our understanding when we're reading the scripture is contextualization. So, so far what we've read, it pertains to what? Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Melchizedek being what? The king of peace. King of peace. King, king, but more so what? King of righteousness. King of righteousness. Son of God. Okay, so read verse one again for me. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, Priest of the Most High God. Oh, right there. King of Salem. Priest of the Most High. That's, uh, that always should be at the forefront of your mind. Because whenever you see Melchizedek, it should automatically take you back to what? To who? Abraham. Abraham. There's something special that took place with Melchizedek and Abraham. Melchizedek, a high priest of who? The most high. Go ahead, Allah. Uh, and one again, or are we starting at two? Uh, four. Down to four. Okay. No, no, go start back at two. Okay. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. So, what you have to understand here. Why is the focus 
on Abraham. What? Because there was a promise made with Abraham regarding his descendants. Thank you. There was a promise made to Abraham regarding his descendants. Now, what comes out of Abraham in regards to his descendants? Children. Promise seed. Promise seed identified as what? Children, Children of Israel. Children of Israel. Yeah. More so and more uh, specifically, since we're dealing with Melchizedek, Abraham, a high priest of the Most High, or a priest of the Most High, What's the first thing that uh, comes to your mouth? We're talking about a priest. Mashiach. Okay, a Mashiach, but also what? Levi. Thank you. Why do you say Levi? Because he, he uh, that is where the priest came from. That's yeah. where the priest came from, Levi. So uh, you have Abraham here. Mm -hmm. We know that the relationship between Abraham and Melchizedek, so... You have Abraham, who's given what? A tent to who? Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. So if Levi is going to come out of who? Amen. Abraham. You have a superior mm -hmm. and a inferior. Mm -hmm. All of this is pointing you to something in the future. You have a superior and an inferior. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. Who would be the superior? Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Who would be the inferior? Levi. 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 Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> without father, verse 3, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither being of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, Abide a priest continually. Stop right there. What's going on right here? It, it's showing, because um, it says without father, without mother, without descent, but at the same time it's calling him the son of God. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's showing how majestic the person is. Okay, you say he's showing how majestic the person is. Huh? So it's showing lineage, like the beginning of where he's gonna come from, and where he's gonna come to. You, you, you're kind of on the right line. You, you're just not um, phrasing the right, but you're about there. Are we talking um, about uh, Mashiach here? Yeah. Think about what Moray said. Because Levi, he comes from. He has a father. He has a mother. Levi and the Levitical right. priest have a lineage that you can trace. Right. You have a superior and you have an inferior. Mm -hmm. You have a Malchizedek priesthood that operated before, mm -hmm. along with, and after the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. You remember when we read in, um, in the Greek part of Shawan, John speaks to Hamashiach. What did he say? You know, John was of the uh, Abijah of the Zadok king. Mm -hmm. But you can trace the Zadok king. Can you not trace that lineage right back to who? Mm -hmm. Levi. Mm -hmm. But what did John say to Hamashiach? He said, I must what? Mm -hmm. Decrease that you may increase. That you may increase. Mm -hmm. Now we have a changing or a passing of the torch. Or the baton or changing of the guard. Mm -hmm. You have what come through a Levitical order now subjecting itself to a higher order, which is the Malchizedek. Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, go ahead. So that's why it says without father, without mother, because the Malchizedek order, even with you you would find in the records or the lineage of who? The Aharon of the Levites. Wait. Say that again? I said Aharon, Aaron, and the Levites. Mm -hmm. 
you will find the Melchizedek lineage in there oh, at this yeah. time. Period. Because remember now, you remember when we're reading this, the Melchizedek, most people look at it as an individual. Mm -hmm. But you should focus on the office that the individual is operating in. Remember, Noah had how many sons? Three. Three. What was the job of one of them sons? One of those sons had a specific job. Yes. To, to, um, he had who? Ham, Shem, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. But Shem had a specific job. He was a priest. He was a priest. He was to do what? Teach righteousness to, to his brothers. Mm -hmm. Can we not find records that explain who Shem was? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who does it say he is? He says he was a priest. He was a priest. You also got records that he was Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes, sir. So could he not have been the Melchizedek at that time? Yes, sir. Noah was the Melchizedek at end during his time. Mm -hmm. so, you, you don't know if I find it strange that all of these men, even before there was a Levitical priesthood, they were making sacrifices, building off and doing the operating in the office of what? A priest. A priest. Remember when he spoke to um, of the nation of Yashraal, he said, you are what? A peculiar people. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you are, um, nation of kings and priests. what did he say? Nation of kings and priests. A kingdom of you priests. You a kingdom of a kingdom priests. priests. Yeah. He said, you are a kingdom of priests. Not a kingdom with a priesthood. Because remember, before the building of the golden calf, who did you who use? And who did he say was his portion? That's right. But more specifically, who? Huh? So what? The what? The what was it? What did you say before? I said more specifically, who? Before the Levites. Uh, Somebody just said the firstborn. You remember he was going to use the firstborn of all of Yashraw. They right. were going to do the ministries and the service. Yeah, right. not the Levites. It wasn't until after what golden the golden calf. I had a um, little discussion. Um, I was on. I let a body who them uh, bake me into Periscope, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a Jewish guy. And were the two Christians? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got into a discussion, and they were like, they asked me, can you keep the law? They asked me, said, do you keep the law? I said, yeah, the um, law that was given to us to keep. He said, you keep all 613 or all 600 some law. I said, no, because all 613, they don't pertain to uh, me. I said, but one thing I do keep, I said, I keep the covenant law. You have to realize that something took place at Sinai. The nation of Yashra entered into a covenant. Did, and I asked them, I said, let me ask you something. I said, at Sinai, when Moses came down off uh, Sinai, I said, did he come down with 613 laws or did he come down with some, uh, another number? Another number. I said, he came down with 10. I said, this 10 is what the nation of Yashra all is responsible for. One thing about this 10, I don't care where you are, name me one of them you can't keep. I'm waiting. <laughs> name me one of the 10 you can't keep. He said, so if you don't keep up, he said, you're guilty um, of... Um, or not no. keep, yeah, uh, not keeping them all then. I said, no, brother. I said, uh, -uh. I said, you're understanding that. I said, what happens is, I said, remember, what are the two things that a, 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 a people must have to qualify themselves as being a nation? The law. They have to have. Constitution. Uh, Constitution. Okay, they have to have what? A, a, a body of legislation. They have to have land. And a body of legislation to govern the people within them in the land. I said, I told, I said, remember, Israel was in the wilderness when they received the covenant. I said, where were they headed to? 
into the land. They were headed to that land, but before they got in the land, they had to have something to govern them. That's right. so all the law is, is a body of legislation to govern citizens that are in the nation of Yahshua. <clears throat> when the nation of Yahshua is in captivity, those laws have no jurisdiction over the nation of Yahshua. Why? Because they're not in their land. Because uh, a person's laws cannot usurp the authority and the laws of the land that you reside in if it's outside of your um, ancestral land. That's just like me going to China. <laughs> I, don't, I can live in China 50 years. I don't care what laws I abide by the United States. They have no jurisdiction over the laws of China. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? You remember when Peter was wrestling within himself to pay a temple tax? Were they not in Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. What did Hamashiach tell Peter? Render to Caesar. He said, render to Caesar what it is. The Romans had what? Subdued and they were ruling over Israel. Mm -hmm. So Roman law is what took place first. Then we can go into the history of um, the Sadducees, I mean, and the Pharisees and all of them. You know, you had sellouts who they gave a certain amount of power and prestige to what? To rule over their own people to keep insurrection from taking place in the land. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't have to deal with it. So, pick back up that, that verse you left off at. 7 and 3. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor the end of life, but made like unto the Son of the Most High Yah, abiding in priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of his spoils, and verily they that are of the sons of Levi. Whom received the office of the priesthood. They that are who? They that are of the office of, the, of Levi. I'm sorry, I said that all crazy. They that are the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But he who but he whose descent is not counted from them, he whose descent what is not counted, is not from, counted them, from them. Go ahead. Received tithes of Abraham and brooked him that had the promises. Okay then, just like the Levite received tithing, we know what the law said. A tenth of the tithing went to who? The Levite. Why? Hebrew 101. They didn't have inheritance. Well, they had inheritance, but they didn't have what? They didn't have a land. A land inheritance. Right. Yeah. So, what was the promise of Abraham? Give it to Abraham. Huh? It was the land inheritance. That's very important because you remember we talked about circumcision, mm -hmm. circumcision, mm -hmm. and the question was asked if it was needed today. It was needed to enter the land. Right. It became, it went from what? Being attached to the covenant. Mm -hmm. But remember when they broke the, um, the covenant, they built the golden calf. What happened? Circumcision stopped. Mm -hmm. That whole 40 years they were in the wilderness, did they circumcise? No. Mm -hmm. When did they circumcise again? After all of them was dead and it was time to go back in. And it was time to go where? Back in. Back in where? Time to go into the land. Well, not back in, it's time like to go into, into the, the land. land. Now it becomes what? A right or written to what? Inherit and enter into the land. Mm -hmm. Is it still required today? No. Well, what? Mm-hmm. Not in the land. What are you talking about? Oh, today. Like these days and times? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Nah. Ain't nobody trying to walk around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why would it be required today? We're not because in the I said it's required. required. It's required. In the land it's a part of our inheritance. I mean, we are. Okay, explain 
you, what you're saying. You're saying it's required and it's a part of our uh, heritage. Because just like you have, okay, so if I was to use an example how Paul would talk to those who weren't circumcised and those who were circumcised, and he compared the difference of them both, he, would, he made it know that circumcision is not null and void. It doesn't make them greater or lesser. It's a thing of circumcision was given as a, uh, like I said, as a token to enter the land. So when we're entering the land, we do need to be circumcised. Okay, I agree with you. I, I thought he was talking about that today, like the people who are over there and having in the land today. Now, now, I agree that you always have to be circumcised going to go into the land. And also, we were circumcised because the sensitivities, the sensitivities of it was to remind us, um, you know, um, right. help me out here. The sensitivity of the heart, right? Exactly. Like, okay. The heart. heart. Exactly. Say, say, say it again. Of the heart. Like circumcision the of the heart is right. required. Yes. Right. Not circumcision of the flesh. Right. Yes. Circumcision of the heart. This is what the Mathesetic right. is all about a superior and an inferior. You ever know, know Paul? He always went back to what? Abraham. He always go back to what? Circumcision of the heart. So uh, basically, everything that Levi did physically is seen spiritually. Do not, do not possess it. Then he said, "We're gonna have to walk with the spirit of the mm -hmm. law." What's the spirit of the law? Is he uh, talking about heart, being written in our hearts? Right, but is he talking about the six thirteen? No, I'm talking no, about the covenant ten. law that we broke. The covenant land that we broke. Covenant law that we broke. Mm -hmm. People don't call the Ten Commandments law, but it is. Because law is an English word that got all, um, mostly 80, 90% of the world uh, confused on. You have something that's called covenant Torah, which is what we are held to. We broke and we got in trouble because of 10, not 613 or 14. It was because of 10. 613 was added to us. Because yes, of sin. Because of sin. Go ahead. I, I just want to emphasize on that again, what, you, what, what we were saying, what Nisha was saying, too, about, about it being about the heart. You know what I mean? That's what I, I was taught from the beginning that it's supposed to, you know, that's supposed to be a reminder of the circumcision of the heart. You know what I mean? Why, that's why circumcision even took place. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people may not know that. And I know y'all might be saying, but what does that have to do with setting the captives free? Something ha has to happen before that can even be established or taking place or take place. But as we read, we'll see why. Go ahead. Seven and um, seven. seven to seven, right? Mm -hmm. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may say so, Levi also who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. Mm -hmm. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Somebody explain that. You got a smile on your face like that. Well, it's 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 well it's self explanatory. Yeah, it's self explanatory. He was in right. his father's sack when he was <laughs> Right? You know what I'm saying? So so as it was given to Abraham, it was for all of his descendants because his descendants were sitting right there with him. Right. right. Well, it, the whole focus is what? The promise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though <laughs> I told you to work with him. <laughs> <laughs> Even though <laughs> Levi wasn't physically present yet. He was yet in what? His father's lawn, right. meaning that the promise that was made to Abraham would be passed down mm -hmm. through Abraham's seed from generation to generation to generation. Go ahead, up. Man, I got tears rolling on the last If therefore, go on, man. Hello. 11. Thank you. If therefore perfection were by the Levi, by the Levitical priesthood, 
For under it, the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aharon? Mm. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Now let's go back to read 11 real good and real slow. Okay. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, if perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. For under it the people received the law. Mm -hmm. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek? Read that one again. What further? what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aharon? And not be called after the order of mm. Aharon. <laughs> Go ahead. For the priesthood being changed. For the priesthood being changed. There is made of necessity a change also of the law. There, oh, read that again. There is made of necessity a change also of the law. There is made a necessity a change also of the law. If the Levites were per perfect, or if they were perfect, what need for there to be another what? It, it wouldn't be a need. It wouldn't be a need. But because perfection was not in the Levites, mm -hmm. and we read now that even not in the law, there needed to be a change in what? The law too. The priesthood the and, the law. The, law. and the, law. the law. So what was the change in the law? We went, back, we went from the 613 back, back to what was originally given, which was perfect. We went back, we, we left what? The, the 613. 613. And ended back to what? To what was given, what was perfect. To what was given, what was perfect, which was the um, covenant that we were, were betrothed under at Sinai. That's the covenant. That's what Yahuwah came to do, bring us back to the original covenant. The original covenant of was what? Of a Melchizedek order. The other ones were given because of what? Because of sin. When he said that they were what? A peculiar people, he said it was um, a set apart nation, he said they were what? No, I'm talking about the good part. When he, <laughs> the good part. <laughs> he said they were a what? A kingdom of priests. Mm -hmm. right. Guess what they didn't have when he said that? No, 613 13. laws. Right. Mm -hmm. All of this, that's what you have to focus on. What do they possess at that time? What has taken place at that time? What has not taken place at that time? What has not taken place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what has not? They haven't broke the covenant. Right. And that's what that the um, discussion that me, the Jewish guy, and uh, the two Christians, I was explaining to them. I said, you know, they didn't have 613 laws before or when Moses was on top of the uh, uh, Sinai. I said, remember, I expressed when Moses came out, he came down with 10. I said the others weren't given the to after they broke the covenant. What's in the ark? Ten. It's ten. That's right. And what did he tell um tell Moses? He even gave them specifics of what to do with the ten. Mm -hmm. He took the, uh, it was, it was, they were put in the, in the He inside. told them to take the book of the law. Put it inside the ark. But what did he say to do with the book of the covenant? Why did he have to distinguish between the two? He said, put the book of the covenant on the side of the ark, or in the side of the ark. Put one inside the ark, put the other in the side of the ark. And he said, let the book of the law what? Did he say, let it be a witness? He said, let the heaven and the earth what do what? Bear witness. Bear witness. And what happened when Hamashiach shed his blood at uh, at Calvary? The heaven and the earth was a witness. Was it not? 
a blood moon, mm -hmm. a solar eclipse in the heavens, mm -hmm. simultaneously what happened at the exact same time. Earthquake. Was it not an earthquake at the same time? One is a witness to the other. So, with Hamashiach establishing the Melchizedek, that has to be established before what? Before we enter back into the land. So when we enter back into the land, what is taking place? We'll be under, well, we'll be married. Okay, once we get in the land, we'll be married. But what has to happen for us to get into the land? We gotta be right. We have to be, uh, we have to, uh, it has to be put upon our hearts. Okay, man, that's good. Let's keep reading. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. For he of whom these things are spoken. Because remember, what's the title of the lesson? Seven captives free. Seven mm -hmm. captives. You can't enter into a land before what? Before being free. Before being free. Go ahead. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe. Say that again. Read that again. For he of whom these things are spoken. I need to go back and read the letter. Go ahead. Right, let's do it because it, 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 it go all together. Read it. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what for the need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. <laughs> I don't know if that went over y'all head. <laughs> y'all caught that real quick. But it was saying that the Mashiach is saying that, the, that this Mikhail, that this priest is of another tribe. That's all the hints right there. That's all the... The bells and whistles right there, you know what I mean? To let you know what's really going on right here. Moving on to 14. For it is evident that our Elohim sprang out of Judah. He sprang out of who? For it is evident that our Elohim sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood coming out of who? Yehuda, mm -hmm. of Judah. So this Malchizedek lineage will never be found in Aharon or Aaron or the Levites. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. So were the Ten Commandments, were they carnal? You think so? Yes. Because they, they were commanded to us to do here. Mm -hmm. So they are natural. They are carnal. Even though they have a spiritual background. They still right. there for us to do in the natural. Mm -hmm. Murder is a natural thing. Adultery right. is yeah. a natural thing. Two ways. So they both get two ways. Yeah, right. So they can be natural, but are, are they carnal? Mm -hmm. No, no. Expound. What do you mean? Right. Carnal, carnal is the operative word. Carnal, because remember, when they received, go ahead. Carnal, governed by, well, uh, sorry, keep going. Governed uh, by mere human nature and not by the spirit of Yahweh. Right. Which, which he emphasized on. Mm -hmm. Good. So, the book of the law, a covenant law that we received at Sinai. I'll get what you're saying. What did he tell them? He did not say, choose ye what? This day who you will serve, life and death. Life and death. Right. Life and what? The commandments. Commandments are right. keeping them or obliging to what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The vow that you made. Right. Mm -hmm. Then they say, go, told Moses, go back and tell um, Elohim. That we will do. That we will do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. Although they did the opposite. Go ahead, up. 16. 
who is not who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before going before for the weakness an unprofitable un, <laughs> unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. By thee which we draw nigh unto Yahuwah, and inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Elohim swear, and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So what was the oath? For those priests were made without an oath, but this was an oath by him that said unto him, The Elohim swear, and will not repent. That thou, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay. 22. By so much was Yahusha made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continued, continued ever, had an unchangeable priesthood. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto Yahuwah by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us who is holy, um, our Kodesh, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests who offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered when he offered up himself. For this he did once when he offered what? Up himself. Mm -hmm. So what sacrifice was he? And what sacrifice did he fulfill when he offered up himself? Yeah, that was life. For, for the nation of Yashraya. Okay, a sin debt, a sin offering, whatever. Atonement. Okay, atonement, sin offering, guilt offering. Remember, he fulfills all these offices, mm -hmm. uh, all the offerings. So, you got many that will say he was not a sin offering. So, what do we say about that? That's all, that's all how, how, how do we sin. know or if you were told that you were wrong to say that he was a sin offering how would you um, support your claim or argue um, or present your argument or defend what you believe I mean <clears throat> because if you think about it when he died for the sins of Yashara, um, okay. sin means to, it means to miss the mark mm -hmm. in every way, shape, or form. So he, he, he died for, for those who had missed the mark, whether it was those who were guilty or those who did it by error, because the sin just means mm -hmm. to miss the mark, whether it was you did it on purpose or it was right. a guilty thing. What picture... Could you paint or what in scripture would you point back to to prove or show that it's a sin offering? Well, you uh, just reading right here in Hebrews uh, 10, uh, 11, excuse me, 10 and uh, 11, it says, And every priest stands daily ministering and offering. Oftentimes, uh, the same sacrifice can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, mm -hmm. sat down at the right hand of Yahuwah. So that right there tells you that he was our sin offering. 
Right. So what if we didn't have the book of Hebrews? Well, if we didn't have Hebrews, we would have him as a type, as a lamb. Right. That shows that he was right. our sacrificial lamb for right. our sin offering. Right. Isn't a sin offering or uh, has to be a blood offering, a blood sacrifice? Right. And his, uh, we know that his body was broken and blood came mm -hmm. out. Okay. So more specifically, come on, you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. They didn't break his bones. Uh -uh. No, I didn't say he broke his bones. You said his body was broken. Yeah, as far as the skin and blood came yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, what was the red heifer offering mm -hmm. about? What was it for? Mm -hmm. Sin. Sin for sin. Mm -hmm. What was the only offering that couldn't take place inside of Jerusalem? Sin. Sin mm -hmm. offering. More, but more specifically, so what animal? Lamb. Mm -hmm. I mean, red scapegoat. Scapegoat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not only the scapegoat, but one in particular. The uh, the red heifer. The red heifer mm -hmm. yeah. often had to take place on an altar outside of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And his sacrifice was his sacrifice. Well, that's why it had to take place outside of Jerusalem. Because of the uh, offering and the scripture that he was fulfilling. Even in Hebrew, what, um, what more is reading, it talks about how a sacrifice made without, showing that how he was without or outside of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Aki. Verse 26. For such an high priest became us who is Kodesh, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices for his own sins, and then for the people's, for this he did once when he offered up himself, for the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. Uh -huh. By the word of the oath, which was since the law, make of the son who is consecrated for evermore. Okay, read that um, 28 again. For the law make of men high priests, which have infirmity. Stop right there. For the law make of men high priests, which have infirmity. Mm -hmm. But, go ahead. But the word of the oath, which was since the law. Make of the Son who is consecrated forevermore. Evermore. Uh, you know, it says, it says right there, which was since the law. Mm -hmm. So making it known that even while the law was in motion, this is still in motion because it was since the law. Exactly. It was like, it, it's like it, it didn't stop. It was like it didn't stop. It didn't stop because you always had the Melchizedek operating. And with the Melchizedek operating, you ever notice, even when it came to the Levite, the Levitical priesthood became so wicked, what happened? You even had to raise it? up prophets. Huh? You had to raise up prophets. You had to raise up prophets. And also, you remember when um, Zadok came on the scene? Zadok had sons. So now, what does the Most High do? He uses sons. He comes out of mm -hmm. Aharon, not out of Aharon, but he goes through Zadok. Because now, you have mm -hmm. a righteous seed now operating. So now, you have Zadok come on the scene. Now, all the priesthood from Zadok and Zadok's sons are called what David. Remember, David took Zadok or Zadok's sons. And now, because Israel had become so wicked, the priesthood had become so wicked, now when you trace the uh, Abijah or the courses of the elders or the priests, who are they going through? Who's lineage? Mm -hmm. Zadok. Mm -hmm. That's why when you even get to uh, Hamashiach, when he's with John, John's lineage traces all the way back to Zadok or the Zadokim. He's not even dealing with 
uh, the Levitical order pretty much anymore, but he's coming through and operating through uh, the Zadokim or the sons of Zadok. Or Zadok's lineage, let me put it that way. All the way up into John. So that's what John said. Now, I must decrease that you increase. And what was that? Because Messiah was coming out the priesthood that was greater than the one that you know what I'm saying? That right. They stemmed from. It was a changing of the guard, like we said mm -hmm. earlier. And wasn't John also the forerunner? Yes. Before Hamashiach to prepare the people for the kingdom of heaven. That was to prepare hand. the people, and also what to do what? Inaugurate Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. Fulfill all that. But he had to fulfill all that, and he explained mm -hmm. to that in the same. Um, he told you it was necessary that the scriptures be what? Fulfilled. Fulfilled. More mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think a part of the, 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 the issue is that even like during the times of Yosha, his disciples, his Talmudim thought that he was coming to prepare a kingdom right then. Yeah, mm -hmm. There's always a misconception mm -hmm. of what's happening greater. You know, Yah is doing something on a greater scale than mm -hmm. what we actually identify with and think at that present time. And it's the same thing with the transfer of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. We're looking at certain key things and saying no, no, no. Whereas even like with with, 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 with John, you know, John was saying no, no, no. Mm -hmm. But uh, Yahusha understood that there was a greater scale that had to be fulfilled. Exactly. And this is what takes place, even if that's taking place with us. Right. That's why uh, I believe it is that uh, that Peter, when he's talking about Shaul, Mm -hmm. He says that a lot of his writings and things that he's saying, because they're understood from a greater scale, yeah. they're being missed, and people are misinterpreting and, and, and looking at them wrong. And uh, it seems like that's what happens with us a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Because we, we get fixated on a hope and or something taking place. The imagination start getting Yeah, getting and what's happening right, right now, we tend right. to forget that Yah is greater right. and moves at a higher pace Hallelujah. than what we see and can do. Right. You exactly. know, And so because of that, sometimes we don't fully understand the move into action. It actually has taken place and happened. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. You're so right. Yeah, true. And that's why, just like Maury said, if you watch Paul's life, mm -hmm. people forget. Paul had many people put to death mm -hmm. over the law. Mm -hmm. But when he had his Damascus experience, mm -hmm. did Paul come with a different message? Mm -hmm. Paul started pulling them back to who? Abraham? Mm -hmm. so I'm mm -hmm. talking about circumcision of the heart? Mm -hmm. Why? Because Paul understood of a greater covenant. He realized what Israel needed was, hmm. and what Hamashiach came to do, was to take them back to that very thing that mm -hmm. they had broken. Mm -hmm. He had to wake up the people. He had to come to a people in such a time, and at such a time, because before he could come and establish his kingdom, he had to do something. Mm -hmm. He could not physically free them mm -hmm. until they had been what? Mm -hmm. Mentally mm -hmm. and spiritually unbound and free. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's go back. Let's get Isaiah 61. And um so like you who would get Luke 4 and I want to say Luke 4 and 18. Yes, you're right. Okay. Yirmiyahu, more Yirmiyahu, get Luke 61, starting at verse 1. Isaiah? I, yeah, I mean, Isaiah 61, starting at uh, verse 1. And, um, okay. Shalakia, well, he's going to get Luke 4 and 18. Isaiah 61. Luke 4, 18. Starting at verse 17. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Isaiah, Yeshua, 61, starting at verse 1. And Lucas, for you Greeks, 
Um, the fourth chapter starting at verse 17 and 18. Go ahead. Yeshiyahu, Isaiah 61, verse 1. More hear me out. I swear he said you had that one. He's like a loop. That's how I was looking at you shaking my head. Like, yeah, he got that. He got that. He got that. 61, verse 1. Yeah. All right. The Spirit of Yahuwah is upon me because Yahuwah has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Preach yeah. what? Good tidings good tidings. to the meek. To the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. He sent me to what? Bind up the broken heart. Proclaim liberty to the captives. Proclaim what? Liberty. Liberty or freedom to the captives. And the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Go ahead. To proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah and the days of vengeance of our power. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion and give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah, that he might be glorified. And, and they shall build the old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations, and strangers shall stand and feed our flocks, and the sons of them, alien, shall be your plowmen and your and your vine dressers. Or the sons or, of the Gentiles, uh -huh. or the nations, uh -huh. shall stand and feed our flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen yeah. and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of Yahuwah. He shall be what? The priests of Yahuwah. He shall be yeah. what? The priests of Yahuwah. The priest of Yahuwah, go ahead. Men shall call you the ministers of our Elohim Yahuwah. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall, shall ye boast yourselves. Can't wait. <laughs> For your shame ye shall have double, and your confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Mm. Therefore their land they shall possess, the double everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, Yahuwah, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, mm -hmm. and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which Yahuwah has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in Yahuwah. My soul shall be joyful in my Elohim, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decked himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorned herself with jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes these things, these things that are sown in it to spring forth, so Yahuwah will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So before they are what? Set free. Before they are what? Priests. He establishes what? Covenant. He establishes covenant. He establishes the Machiavellian order. When that is established, then the captives can be set free. Go ahead. When I read, I know you said it started at 18. But can we read from 17 to 21? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So, you see. <laughs> I, I want to bring something Didn't I tell you to work with him already? You just sit down. <laughs> and did nothing to ask you to do. <laughs> so, you see what Yahuwah is doing. The role that Hamashiach fulfilled. I don't know if we understand the depth of what he came to do. Ooh, mm, mm, mm. He's establishing you as what? Priest mm. of the Malkizetic order. So just like Moray said, 
when he came, they thought he was coming to establish his kingdom and um, get them in. That wasn't the case. Why couldn't he do it? It wasn't time. First of all, it wasn't time, and they were what? They wasn't ready. They were occupied they by the Romans. Mm -hmm. right. They were in captivity. Right. They were in captivity. And remember, we can say all we want. I got you, Mark. We can say all we want that he could have given them power. They could have overtaken the Romans. No, they couldn't. How do we know that? We remember Daniel's vision. Yes, Daniel's you remember vision. about the precious metals? Mm -hmm. Each one of these kingdoms, they had to rule. That's right. You can't stop prophecy. <clears throat> oh, go ahead, Maureen. No, sir, you covered it. You, oh. You, just, <laughs> <laughs> you covered it. You covered it. You covered it. And that was to, and to add that, that made you a liar. Yeah. It would have. And to add that, right. in, in the vision, what right. destroyed it came from the heavens. Yep. Not what was on earth. Exactly. Oh, that's good, too. I, yeah. I want to say yeah. something, too. I want to add something y'all don't mind. And when he was talking about what has to take place first in establishing the kingdom, because I see a lot of rules. They be talking about 400 years, 400 years up. What happened? We're supposed to be gone now. You know, you got some people who like to also kind of just kind of mock you with that because they hear you saying it and they, they want to believe, but they like, well, 400 years been here. It's been announced everywhere. 400 years. What's up? We ain't left yet. You know, so I got something I want to read here real quick. And it's in Genesis um, 15, 13, mm -hmm. through 14. Now, I know y'all have heard this before, but it's something that another group pointed out to me. It says, um, and he said unto Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. This is what he pointed out right here in 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great sufferings. Judgment got to take place first. Yeah. And you know, when that was pointed out to me, I kind of relaxed on everybody rushing me with that 400 yeah. years. 40 years. You told us 40 years? Okay. Now I see what's going on. That judgment got to take place first. Mm -hmm. And you see it taking place? Y'all ever heard of right. the Roman Empire? It's, huh? it's going down. It's going down. It's going down. Y'all ever heard of influenza? Mm -hmm. Hey, baby. Tell them how many people died per month with the flu. Per month. Per month. Not annually. Go ahead. It's 198,000 per month. Yep. 198,000 per month. Yeah. Please. Influenza, the flu. All about the world, all right? Yeah. yeah. That's a lot. And they only had, um, what, how many people died from the coronavirus? They said 25, but that number is probably very well exaggerated because my sister called me from South Korea last night and said that the town in South Korea where she lives, one person who was ground zero came in and affected people in restaurants, church, and it's a widespread wow. in South Korea right now. And she won't leave her apartment. And she was like, what should I do? What should I do? I was like, should have gotten out of here before now. But, you know. Mm -hmm. That's 25, you said, a month. 20, they, they say 25 a month. But like I said, that number is under-exaggerated. So you think more of a under Probably a bomb. Mm. And Warren Casadabar, Warren Casadabar sent me a video, but I had already seen the video before he sent it. And it's people over there, they, they spitting on the elevator but it's, and rubbing it in so other people can get infected with the disease. I don't know if it's because they're mad they got it or, or what, but it, it's like it's, it's a bit of evilness mixed in with this disease, yeah, too. You know, just bringing the evilness out of people, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> spitting on buttons and rubbing it on all the buttons. Yeah, should they bring evil out of them? They evil out of them, you know? severity of all this stuff that's going on and how severe it is. You don't even hear about the bats in Australia. Mm -hmm. Have y'all seen how Australia's been played with those bats? Yeah. Fires, everything. I mean, fires, it's all over. But see, let me tell you something. They'll never tell you what's going on because the powers that be and those that say they're Jews that are not, mm -hmm. 
They control the narrative. Right. They get to put, uh, they get to, you know, dictate what goes out and what the people are allowed to see. They control the media outlets. Because, you know, I have not heard anywhere in the news that South Korea is contaminating coronavirus. Me either. My sister called me and told me. She said it's bad. Wow. They, they said we have to 34 people. They said we have to 34 people in America on an app that hit my phone last night. Yeah. It was one day in New Jersey, uh, they tested them positive for, for coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Out of the 15 people that they had going to. It's a couple in Georgia they tested positive for it. It's yes. spray like a wildfire. But it's the most I can remember. That woman in Travail, it speaks about a revelation. Mm -hmm. This woman is is, um, is Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Israel is the, the child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, let me tell you something. Before that woman bring a uh, come forth, a uh, bring forth, what happens with her labor? You know, all before when she first started having contractions, they what? Hours apart. Uh, say what now? She travels. She travels. But the closer it get time to the delivery, or the closer get to our time to be delivered, or our deliverance, right. guess what? You're going to see this stuff start happening all over the earth. And that's why we pray that Yahuwah would deliver us like he delivered Taylor when she was pregnant with Yeah. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> quickly. I told you she wasn't going to go till Sunday. And she remember, Sunday. and let me, um, let me rephrase that, because I said that wrong. America, these nations that we reside in, they are the womb. Mm -mm. Just like Egypt was the womb that Israel were birthed into a nation in the wilderness. Let me tell you something. Y'all don't, don't see how they have come up with so many laws. They come up with so many, much legislation. You don't see how everybody can prosper and excel in these lands but us. Now all of a sudden, what's the one thing they do to us to try to um, keep us on the rack? So to speak. Israel has always been a very fertile people. Mm -hmm. yeah. We still are a very fertile people to this day. Yeah. But what's the one contraption that they've got smart with that they've learned to do? Abortion. Y'all ever heard of Planned Parenthood? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They slapped those abortion clinics in our communities. What happened in Egypt? Mm -hmm. Firstborn. The firstborn. So why the firstborn? Why did it? Why did they come up with a plan anyway to even just start killing the firstborn? Was it not because of fear of who? The Pharaoh who saw how Israel had what became a great people and had multiplied. Mm -hmm. They took a census. They took a census. What's going on in America? Same they see how we're multiplying greatly, but what's happening with them? They're decreasing. They're decreasing. Right. They're decreasing. And what they do is yeah, 2020 census. 2020 census. They're on. decreasing. So they're going to use the same tactics. They fear. They fear their growth. They fear our growth. But the closer it gets to the time for our deliverance, guess what's going to happen? What happened before Israel came out? They're going to get crazy on us. Did not those plagues go forth? Mm -hmm. And Israel came up out of that, didn't it? Mm -hmm. You see the most high doing the same thing there. Guess what? Israel get ready to come up out of here. 2020 is on. 2020 is right. 400 years of correct. It depends on how you count them. If you're not astute enough to know that the Gregorian calendar is five years behind anyway, what you call the 2020 is actually 2015, of course your account's going to be off. Okay, go, get your scripture out. Huh? Oh, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, because they go through a lot. They 
they go and they come, and we're not real sure of what's happening. So I would say stay out of the Chinese restaurants, yeah. frozen Chinese yeah. food in the markets. Don't eat that stuff. Um, even soy products at this time. Anything made in the last 12 months, I would say just stay away from it. Because we just don't know how long this thing has been out there or how they may try to I want to say this real quick. I'm so glad that you said that, and I'm glad that you said that in front of my daughters because they be like, order some wings, order some wings. I'm like, look, I, ain't, I don't want that Wuhan. We're going to order some wings. We're going to order some wings from the Indians. Yeah, and <laughs> as a matter of fact, when you say Wuhan, right. most of the Chinese products mm -hmm. are made oh, soy sauce or frozen mm -hmm. dinners, mm -hmm. even though it may say Benihana's and all these other things. stops at. It says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit, the Ruach of Yahuwah is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Mm -hmm. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Hallelujah. Moray, when, I, I, when you gave me the scripture, I read ahead, and I looked at my father, and I'm like, now I realize why he closed the book. Because I'm sitting here listening to everything that you hear me reading. Mm -hmm. And all of the, the, the comfort, all that came after the second year of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Comfort, peace, all that came afterwards. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when he came, he came to uplift his people. Okay. To give them a hope that their deliverance is drawing nigh. Drawing nigh. You know what I'm saying? So that way they can have a hope during a trying time. Right. But it ain't going to come until after he has set, set the captives free. Right. Set the captives mm -hmm. free. So when he came. What time was it? Prepare their hearts. Huh? Prepare their hearts. He said, what time? What time was it? Oh. Because like, remember, before they can be free physically, they have to be free. Jubilee. Free. Jubilee. Yeah. Jubilee. Jubilees are important. If You know how you can pinpoint dates from prophecies? Mm -hmm. If you count the days, don't count them by year. Count them in jubilee cycles. Mm -hmm. They have to be counted in jubilee cycles. No and if buts about it. It was jubilee because what happens at jubilee? The deliverance. The deliverance. But not only just the deliverance. You know somebody that's residing in our land. He couldn't free them with the land occupied. Because Jubilee gives you what? The right, not only are you free, but you to do what? Free slaves. What happened when Cyrus freed uh, Israel? But what did Cyrus uh, command the people to do before they went back to Jerusalem? Paid them. No. He what? Say it again? They, they got paid. They got paid. They got and, reparations, basically. Yes. And they were given what? Material to do what? Go back and rebuild. To rebuild the temple. Yeah. Go back yeah. and yeah. rebuild. Yeah. Because when at Jubilee, not only are you free, but you to return where? Back yeah. to yeah. your ancestral yeah. land. Mm -hmm. Hamashiach was preparing something, free and different, something that was to take place later. 
It was just like Maurice said. He didn't come to free them then. Mm -hmm. Not physically. Mm -hmm. But he had to do some of this to get their mindset, give them the right message to start what? Spread it to the people. Mm -hmm. You notice when you were reading, he said he spoke to them, they were where? At the synagogue. Would there have been any other nations in a synagogue? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You kid. And it's crazy because they all knew that, that that's why they were staring at him. Mm -hmm. But they want him to finish the rest of the book and he closes it. Yeah, he closes it. And they looking at him like, why he ain't finished? <laughs> that's that's just crazy. You know how when I do those lessons that y'all like, and I just I'm saying close the book. And so come and take it that we what it's what it what, what it's saying is is that when okay, he said he came to, to, to preach the deliverance of the captives, he came to preach the good news, right. healing and, and of the brokenhearted. You gonna send sight to the blind. Mm -hmm. And then the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he just closed the book. Mm -hmm. Right after that, if you if you go back to when Jeremy was reading um, Isaiah 61, mm -hmm. after it says the acceptable year of the Lord, it speaks about comfort to Israel. Wow. It speaks about us be, coming back into the promise, the covenant, becoming priests, becoming right. all of that. Right. So when he closes the book before reading all of that, now they're stuck and they're sitting there and they're looking at him. Like, this is all you came to do? They look at him like, oh, you talking about yourself. Right. <laughs> because he said, right here, have the scriptures yeah. fulfilled in their ears. Right. Mm -hmm. He let it be known right there. This is all I came to do. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why there was a misconception. Mm -hmm. Constantly going back. Was he the one? Was he going to be the king? Right. Was he going to be the one to deliver mm -hmm. them at that time? Cover that, Exactly. Talk about the time of Dean. They mm -hmm. Is it yet to come? Is mm -hmm. the kingdom yet to come now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but remember, yeah. just like you said, even your Hukunan's disciples are following. What did they, uh, That's right. they said, go ask him, mm -hmm. is he the one? That's right. That's or should right. we look for another? And what did he say? What did he say? The did he not say the same thing we just read? Yes. Mm -hmm. He the said, go thing. back and tell them what you hear and what you see. Mm -hmm. He said, what is that? Blinded eyes of being what? Mm -hmm. Open oh, up. He stated the same thing. Mm -hmm. He could have easily said, yes, my child, I right. am the one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. He confirms everything with as it is written. More the other thing is that even with that too is even when Herod killed, it was out of fear of exactly. not knowing. Mm. What what they right. knew, what they were hoping, or what they were scared right. he was coming to do, he wasn't right. even actually mm -hmm. coming to do mm -hmm. at that time. But because of those prophecies mm -hmm. being spoken, they they moved uh, and and they moved fast. They moved ahead of time mm -hmm. out of fear. That's right. But, yeah. but but that's what the nations have always done. Mm -hmm. Like you brought up Egypt. Egypt, if you read the book of Yasha, it gives account how they knew when Moses grew up, yeah. what he was going to bring to the kingdom. Right. So they started killing the firstborns yeah. before any type of, of Messiah can raise up in Israel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, the, the nations have been doing that for years. Like you said, Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. killing off any potential Messiah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why Hamashiach had to shed his blood. I don't think y'all understand the importance of the blood. Not only for sin, mm -hmm. But remember, under the Melchizedek order, under the covenant, it was cut by what? Mm -mm -mm. Bloodshed. Yes, sir. And by him establishing the covenant, they were able to receive a land inheritance. So in order to enter back into the land, guess what was going to have to ha happen? It was going to have to be by blood again. Mm -hmm. Everything is about the promise, the inheritance, the covenant that was cut for the inheritance. That's why Hamashiach came to do what he did. He did everything in order according to how he was supposed to do it, according to the plan that Yahuwah had, had established. That's right. That's right. They say, is it now time that the kingdom be restored back to who? Mm -hmm. Israel. What was Hamashiach's uh, question? Right there. Yeah. He said, it's not for him, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's the only father. It's the, in the father's time. Only the father. So not even the angels, no. Only the father. Only the father. But something has to be established. 
And that's what Hamashiach came to do. Don't you know he set the captives free? Yes, he did. That's why we're able to sit here and go in the Word and know who we are and what's required of us. But it started with them. Hallelujah. But we're just to wrap up. We're good. So, huh? 10%? Oh, we're good. We're going to give her the close out. So, with that being said, we thank, you know, the Most High Adi Hu for his word and what he has spoken to us today. And at this time, before I just close the book, I'm going to um, yield the floor. We have our uh, more Dr. Bikaya here. And we're going to let him have words, that, you know, express himself in any manner he wants. I enjoyed the lesson. Hallelujah. I enjoyed the lesson. Um, I think it's important for us to take heed to what's being said. Uh, because so that we can position ourselves to be in a place to, to receive and to do what the, that the Most High and His Son Yosha HaMashiach has for us to do in this hour so that can, we can align ourselves with His plan. Yeah. All of this is about us yes. aligning ourselves with what it is that He has for us to do so that as we are anticipating His return, as we are anticipating yes. certain things that take place, we're in line in the season that he has for us to be. Hallelujah. Talk about for an awesome word. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we would also like to, you know, give um, honor and recognition to our senior Moray, Moray Kasadaba, who's not here with us on today, but we do want to honor and uh, recognize him in his absence. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody have any questions or any comments or anything they want to add, you know, feel free to do so at this time. If not, we're going to stand for prayer. We're going to ask Aki um, Shalak Yahoo to pray us out and also um, pray over the food as we are uh, adjourn. presence. We thank you for the word that was brought forth from Morik Ali Yahoo. And we just thank you, Father, that we were all fed today. We ask, Father, that not that we don't walk according to only knowledge, Father, that we be doers of your word. That we be prepared in our hearts and in our minds, Father, that what was said today don't just get passed down to the ground, but we apply it to our everyday lives, Father, that we may be prepared, a bride that is ready and dressed for the wedding feast, Father, that we may not be seen and, 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 and the Father happen to, to come upon us and we're not ready. Father, we thank you for us having a spirit of, of preparedness, Father, a spirit of urgency for this time that we are living in. And we thank you for your word.
word. We thank you for, for, for the men that you have given for us to, to, uh, to, that you poured your spirit on to teach. And we thank you for, for, for protecting us and give us traveling mercies, Father, as we come and as we go. Father, we just thank you for what you are doing. We ask that you protect Maureen Kasadaba as he's taking care of business. Yeah. Oh, and we yeah. ask that you keep us and those that were, were not able to be here, we ask that you keep them as well, Father. Allow your ruach to be upon us. Father, the spirit of peace and joy, shalom and grace. And we just thank you for what you are doing in Congregation Yashiro and with Yashiro abroad. And we thank you also for Moray Samak's assembly, Father. We thank oh, you for yeah. what you're doing with them. We yeah. thank you for Moray Lamar for what you're doing with him. And we yeah. ask that you continue to do these things for Yashiro. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the food that, that was given. We ask that you bless the hands that made it and bless the hands that's about to eat it. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs>